Hi everyone, thanks for listening to all my presentations. Today I will proceed with antidepressant and the focus will be on venlafacine. Venlafacine could be FSR, could be ACT venlafacine, apple venlafacine, arrow venlafacine or dumb venlafacine. Velavacin belongs to the class of medications known as antidepressant, and specifically a serotonin and norepinephrine, the optic inhibitor. It could appear in various forms as capsule. It could be capsule extended release for 24 hours per hour. In that case, we can have FSO at 37.5 milligram, 75 milligram, or 150 milligram. It's also possible to have generic here at 37.5, 75, or 150 milligram. It can also come in form of tablet, tablet extended release for 24 hours per hour as generic, 37.5, 75, 150, or 225 milligram. Will also be in form of tablet for immediate release per aura. And that will be in form of generic 25 milligram, 37.5 milligram, 50, 75, and 100 milligram. Administration. You can administer venlafacine with food, but the extended release should be given every morning or every evening. Do not open the extended release. Take the whole capsule or the whole tablet. However, because of some disabilities in some patients, you can open the content and pour the entire content on applesauce, but that must be taken whole, no chewing. Be cautious if you are dealing with elderly patients, particularly anyone above 65 and be careful in the face of SIADH and hyponatremia. Uses of venlafacine in migraine prevention, in generalized anxiety disorder, in unipolar major depressive disorder, narcolepsy, particularly with cataplexy, in diabetic mellitus with neuropathic pain, in OCD, that is obsessive compulsive disorder, in panic disorder, in post traumatic stress disorder, premenstrual dysphoric disorder, social anxiety disorder, menopausal vasomotor symptoms, ADHD, and autism spectrum disorder. When you are switching to or from mono emi oxidase inhibitors, we need to be careful. There should be two weeks after you have stopped mono emi oxidase inhibitors before you can start venlafacin. But you can you no know, just stop venlafacin for seven days and start mono emi oxidase inhibitors. It will be better if you can just make it two weeks either before you start the lavacin after monoemyosidase inhibitor or when you start monoemyosidase inhibitor you start the lavacin. Just make two weeks gap you know, while switching. That would be preferred or the patient will, will, will be at less risk. Don't stop the lavacin suddenly. So don't stop the lava scene cold turkey. You have to take power off. In fact, for a long period of time, almost two to four weeks, particularly in any patient who had been on the lava scene for more than three weeks. So don't stop it suddenly. When you are switching from the lava scene immediate release to the lava scene extended release, there must be dosage adjustment. Adverse reactions. There are forests. 
weight loss, anorexia, pterostomia, dizziness, insomnia, asthenia, constipation or diarrhea. Others will include increased lipid, that is hyperlipidemia, pruritus, abnormal uterine bleeding, hallucination, urinary incontinency or urinary retention, seizures, yawning. Others will include nitus, midriasis, accommodation problems, hypomania or even full blown mania, abstention, abdominal pain, dyspepsia, suicide or suicidal addiction, epistasis, cardiomyopathy. Still on adverse reaction, there could be prolonged QT. And I'll pause a bit to explain further on that. When there's prolonged QT, then the individual could be treated to tosar the point. If tosar the point is not corrected, then there will be ventricular tachycardia. From ventricular tachycardia that could be monomorphic, it could turn to polymorphic ventricular tachycardia. And if that is not corrected on time, it will degenerate to ventricular fibrillation. If there is no defibrillation of ventricular fibrillation, then there will be asystole. Without advanced cardiac life support being suited on time, calling code blue, everybody coming around and helping out, asystole will lead to death. Also, we could be faced with erythema multiforming and reactions like Steven Johnson syndrome or toxic edema necrolysis. There could be erectile dysfunction, postpartum hemorrhage, agranulocytosis, aplastic anemia, hepatic dysfunction, acute angle closure glaucoma, and respiratory failure. What are the possible contraindications? Hypersensitivity, monoamine oxidase inhibitor used within the last 14 days is a contraindicating factor, meaning if you want to use the lavacin, and this patient has taken any of the monoamyosis inhibitors in the last two weeks, within those two weeks, don't use the lavacin. One. We should take note that when we prescribe a lavacin to pediatric age group, children, adolescents, and young adults, then we are at risk of suicidal ideation and even frank suicide in them. So suicidal thinking and behavior in adolescents and young adults and children is very high when you place them on velafacin, particularly if you are treating this set of people for major depressive disorder. So the help we're going to render here will be one, to give lowest effective dose and also educate the entire family members and all caregivers that this adolescent uh, young man or woman and this young adult or this child will likely become suicidal in the next few weeks or months. So let them keep an eye on that individual. The part of the warning is anxiety and insomnia. There's likelihood of bleeding and why that? From impaired platelet aggregation. You could see when I was reading through the list of adverse reactions I've mentioned, uterine bleeding, postpartum hemorrhage, epistasis and all the likes, right? This is the reason. Impaired platelet aggregation, and it will be worse when you prescribe in cells at the same time that that patient is on velanvacin. So note this very, very well, please. Keep non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs off the table when this man or woman is on velanvacin or vice versa. 
still part of the warning is that there is likelihood of central nervous system depression. So, no machinery operation or driving while on this medication. If not, there will be road traffic or moving vehicle accident. This lipidemia, fractures, abstention, ocular effects could lead to midriasis and narrow angle glaucoma. So if there's history of narrow angle glaucoma in this man or woman, melanvacine might not be the drug of choice right now. Pulmonary events could not also occur with interstitial lung disease or eosinophilic pneumonia. The part of the warning is we have to work against uh, the probability of serotonin syndrome. Remember, the lamvacine is both serotonin and non-epinephrine reuptake inhibitor. So, serotonin could accumulate. Mm -hmm. If serotonin accumulates, then we'll be dealing with serotonin syndrome. But prevention, they say, is cheaper than cure, right? We can prevent this by not using any serotonergic agents. At the same time, we are using velanvacin. And someone is asking me, how do you mean serotonergic agents? Okay, here's the list. Triptans, tricyclic antidepressant, lithium, fentanyl, tramadol, buspirone, St. John's Wort, tryptophan, and Mono amyloidase inhibitor could impair the metabolism of serotonin. So when we guide against this, we might be able to prevent serotonin syndrome to a certain extent. Still on warning, we might be dealing with sexual dysfunction, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone and hyponatremia, weight loss, anorexia. Increase heart rate and increase blood pressure. It is not approved for bipolar depression. No. And we have to be very cautious in individuals with seizure disorders. Drug drug interaction. I will leave that to your discretion and the advice from your pharmacist or your clinical pharmacologist. Why that? The list is pretty long. I will not be able to say precisely what your patient might be on before being placed on Velavacin or what they might be taking after you have placed them on Velavacin. So make your judgment based on your own discretion, the advice from your pharmacist or from your clinical pharmacologist. Oh, also from the psychiatrist. Note, children with attention deficit and operative disorders may develop anxiety. They may become nervous and have insomnia, anorexia. They can have weight loss and have you no know, adverse effects on growth. In pregnancy, velamvacin will be placed under category C. So it is likely going to be teratogenic. You have to weigh your marriage and demerits before placing that woman who is pregnant right now on the lamvacin. Mechanism of action. The active metabolite that is old decimated velavacin and velavacin itself are inhibitors of serotonin as well as no epinephrine reoptic. Meaning, when you prescribe in lava scene, you are going to get accumulation of both serotonin and no epinephrine. It is also having a very weak inhibitory effect on dopamine reoptic. That is to say, it doesn't mean it's not working on dopamine at all, but it's only weaker when it is compared to serotonin or norepinephrine reoptic. So you are gaining more level of dopamine, more of serotonin, more of norepinephrine. 
when you prescribe velavacin at 37.5 milligram, guess what they're going to get? You are going to get effect of SSRI. So, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors effect will be obtained at 37.5 milligram. So, if you are in a community, in a rural area, you don't have any of the SSRI like sertraline that is Zoloft or citalopram or acetylopram, and you have the lavacin, then you don't need to bother your head. You just prescribe at 37.5 milligram. It's going to give you that effect. But once you increase the dose to 225 milligram per day, then you are going to have both serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibition. You get both, which means you have more of this accumulated at that very high dosage. Examples when we can use the lavacin will be migraine prevention. In that case, you can give a lavacin extended release at 37.5 milligram once daily for three days. The maximum dose you can give is 150 milligram once daily for three days. Another example is unipolar major depressive disorder. You can give a lamvacin extended release at 37.5 to 75 milligram once daily. You may increase to 75 milligram once daily after 47 days. You can also give a lamvacin immediate release at 37.5 to 75 milligram per day in two or three divided doses. When you are treating diabetes mellitus with neuropathy pain, you can use venlafazine extended release at the dose of 37.5 or 75 milligram once daily. You may increase by 75 milligram each week to 225 milligram as the maximum dose per day. With that, I've come to the end of this presentation. Remember to share, remember to give thumbs up, remember to subscribe to my channel, and you are free to leave your comments. I appreciate it.